dear viewers students uh, in the third session on uh, the same essay the death of the moth by virginia wolf we shall have the discussion as to how uh, can this essay be analyzed with uh, uh, points of views with different points of views uh, and that analysis uh will find certain uh, uh <coughs> elements uh, in this essay uh and also how we shall uh, um, connect this essay with uh, the life of uh, the author as uh, in other words we can say how uh, this essay is an autobiographical uh, one or it has some autobiographical uh, <coughs> elements in it so in the earlier uh, uh, two sessions we uh, discussed uh, uh, what is um, the description of the moth and uh, what is the description of the day and atmosphere and uh, what kind of energy and vigor Uh, in the moth uh, is shown by the author and how writer shows her pity for the shortness of moth's life and uh, how that uh, moth is compared uh, to the human life and that we have discussed how it is compared to uh, a bead and uh, how sarcastically uh, attacks Uh, the triumph of uh, the greatest force of uh, the creation against uh, the tiny uh, creature so all that we discussed in the last session and in this session with uh, some of the objectives we are going to have uh, another discussion um, that is uh, to make the students able to elaborate uh, the views of the writer in an essay as you go on reading the essay you will find some use of the writer you uh, are supposed to elaborate them into uh, the essay type answers and for that uh, this discussion helps uh, and also the students uh, will have to learn how to develop uh, uh, conversation in english language that is also another uh, benefit of reading prose units and uh, <clears throat> the students uh, will know how to write uh, short and long answers because uh, an essay uh, will be of 3 uh, 4 pages uh, and there shall be possibility of asking uh, short answer questions and long answer questions and when the short answer questions are asked what kind of uh, the um, extraction uh, should be made by the Uh, <coughs> students to answer that question uh, <coughs> then uh, the text you have to go through again and again so that you can get some important uh, <coughs> highlights out of that and that uh, will be of a greater help for you to uh, elaborate your answer uh, <coughs> Uh, for short answer questions just uh, some examples uh, you can see write a short note on the moth's uh, life in nature see in the beginning itself uh, the writer presents the picture of moth about its size about its color about its flight about its uh, uh, wing uh, uh, and uh, how it has uh, the thin body fiber like thin body and uh, how that uh, vigorous energy uh, is used by that uh, moth to fly and how it becomes uh, tired of its dancing and how it once again tries to get up and dance and how it tries to encounter death and death here is taken as a symbol of uh, Uh, <coughs> the greatest force even against that greatest force it tries to fight and all that you can write about that uh, uh, moth 
See another <coughs> question, right? A short note on the writer's curiosity about the moth. Writer, uh, when uh, she happens to uh, see that uh, moth coming uh, over to the window square and it uh, <coughs> flies there, it sits there, it uh, moves from one corner to another, um, from one side to another. She um, gazes at it uh, continuously with a lot of interest and observes the moth size, shape, color of the wings, energy and she is very much impressed uh, by that uh, moth's flight and she shows pity and she expresses her concern with what might be the problem for that moth um, that uh, uh, cannot uh, fly, that cannot resume its dance and uh, she tries to stretch a pencil to help the moth uh, um, to write himself and this is how uh, um, writer uh, uh, is uh, very much uh, of uh, concern with <coughs> that moth and another short answer question describe the last few hours of the moth's life how it is tired, dancing, flying, the moth settled on the window ledge and uh, the moth failed to fly across the window pane but it uh, makes an attempt to fly for several times but, uh, but he <coughs> slipped down and finally <coughs> he just falls down on his back and uh, he is relaxed and he grew stiff and by there uh, that <coughs> fight ends, the struggle is over. Uh, the long answer, answer question, what makes Virginia Woolf to take interest in the moth? What are her observations? So, interest in the moth uh, uh, is due to its uh, simplicity, simple form and color, vigorous energy of the moth shortness of uh, life of moth, moth's tiredness, attempt to fly across the window pane, his uh, struggle against the death, uh, all these and then uh, she compares that to the bead uh, and, and later she tries to uh, say how um, that energy filled into that moth uh, by the same great force uh, fails finally to uh, fight against that death and how failure and awkwardness uh, <clears throat> lead us to approach death and these are the signals of uh, the arrival of death in our life. So th this is how she is very much concerned with that moth because of her own experience in her life. <coughs> that may uh, give you one critical analysis on uh, this uh, essay, The Death of the Moth. It is a typical piece of writing uh, by Virginia Woolf. It seems Virginia Woolf's trademark piece of production. Trademark piece of production because uh, it can be the best example for her stream of consciousness method in her narration. Her stream of consciousness method. See, is um, uh, known for her stream of consciousness method as he observes uh, life around thoughts, ideas float in uh, the stream of her consciousness and in this piece of writing also uh, what she observes uh, of moth and its life and death certain ideas have floated into uh, this essay and taken their form so, <clears throat> the life uh, that every living being lives and the death that every living being faces uh, have been a phenomenal uh, struggle against some power in the universe. So, this idea is well expressed uh, with uh, the numerous images in this picturesque uh, writing that depicts life and death of the moth. So, how this uh, uh, essay uh, <coughs> continues 
how this essay begins and continues by presenting moth and its struggle and its uh, uh, connection with the world with the greatest power and the death of the moth by the end so let's see in the first paragraph there is the picture of the moth uh, it is a small pest that is not either an attractive one or an unnoticeable one uh, with yellow underwing uh, like a ever beautiful flower of a green uh, creeper moths are neither happy uh, ones like butterflies not dull as their own species with no color so with such uh, details uh, <clears throat> moth is presented in the beginning and then uh, nature being present as a witness so here that moth is flying from one corner to other in the window square as a witness outside the nature uh, <coughs> stands as a witness and in that nature she presents uh, many living beings also that horses and uh, households nearby which uh, out of which some smoke is coming and uh, <coughs> the rooks that are flying uh, over the trees with uh, great inspiration uh, energy that is charged by the great power itself uh, <coughs> all these are uh, presented there and that is the nature picture of nature Uh, being present as a witness and then in the <coughs> next uh, paragraph see the discussion is uh, <coughs> continued about uh, uh, the arrival of the moth to window how that uh, uh, moth alights on the window uh, <coughs> downs and uh, how it is inspired how that season had inspired the plowmen and uh, rooks horses are also inspired like that moth is also inspired and in the beginning it is uh, very very jubilant and happy and energetic and uh, it is enjoying the meager opportunities meager opportunities because its world is uh, smaller uh, as tiny is the moth so smaller is the space of its world but outside that uh, window there is vast uh, world the wide sky but uh, it, it it could not go beyond that uh, <coughs> square of the window and that itself is the world of window how in the world of that uh, window Uh, that moth uh, flies and uh, dances and enjoys <coughs> and that is uh, yeah, uh, very beautifully presented uh, and then uh, tiny bead and the small moth there is uh, an image bead is used it is symbolical element bead uh, that is uh, Uh, being decked by a shear in the string uh, which tells the truth of life but that bead itself doesn't have any life it when it is decked down that will be swinging around uh, and uh, zigzagging around so in that way even the moth also flies and zigzags and swings around and finally it falls down like that the bead also it tells the truth of life but it doesn't have any life it ultimately falls down and decays so that uh, bead is uh, <coughs> compared and then uh, the failure and awkwardness uh, approach of death failure and awkwardness lead uh, us to approach the death so here you see that moth is groping that moth is in flight and it fails to get up and it fails to fly and uh, 
uh, it suffers in awkwardness and she thinks that uh, this failure and awkwardness uh, that that are the signals that are the symptoms of the arrival of death uh, and and this is how she also uh, underwent such failure repeatedly often in her life and that itself made her to uh, fall in depression and uh, because of that depression she uh, made an attempt to commit suicide so this is also there under this point we can express and then uh, <coughs> gigantic effort see the gigantic effort of uh, the small or tiny creature against the power of magnitude against the magnanimous power so this is this is another important uh, point we have to discuss while we analyze the essay uh, completely this is a very important point here she criticizes or she ironically sarcastically uh, um, mentions she sarcastically uh, <coughs> uh, analyzes that the triumph of the greatest force of creation that to against the tiny creature moth and this is what ridiculous see uh, says in her tone itself we can understand how she ridicules that triumph of the greatest force of creation of nature against the tiny creature against against the silly trivial creature tiny creature the small creature moth and she compares herself to that tiny creature moth and how for many times this greatest force has killed her how this greatest uh, greatest uh, power has killed her and for how many times she had experienced death in her life and all uh, that that is uh, uh, read here all that uh, is meant by uh, this uh, satir satiric expression of uh, the writer then <coughs> she finally uh, <coughs> tells us the ironical uh, statement uh, finally with the, the last uh, few words while we will we will look at that dead body of uh, the moth it is relaxed and stiff body as if it was saying death is stronger than i am so by that the essay ends and all these points can be elaborated and that will be given in study material you can refer that then uh, one more uh, <coughs> issue of discussion is one more thing to be discussed as for this essay is concerned imagery and symbolic elements in this essay imagery or images and symbolic elements images and symbolic elements in this essay what are the images you see uh, rooks as against that net rooks are the birds they are the symbol of freedom but flying rooks in thousands in the vast area of the sky they seem to be they appear to be the net spread and thrown into the air both these words rooks and nets are opposite to each other because rooks birds are the symbol of liberty symbol of freedom but net or a trap it is the symbol of confinement it is the symbol of imprisonment 
it is a symbol of the lack of freedom lack of liberty and then you see knots and twigs there she tells those birds will alight on the twigs on the tree tops and in the twigs they will alight they are black in color and uh, those who look at uh, the sitting rooks on the twigs they appear like the knots of the tree and knots and twigs knots are uh, the knots are the symbol of non growing uh, energy but twigs are the symbol of growing energy so knots are the symbols of death uh, twigs are the symbols of birth and then uh, death the word is used many times here even in the title also there is death death failure awkwardness so here you see death is a haunting word throughout the life of virginia wolf because she found the deaths of many members in the family she witnessed her mother's death she witnessed her father's death she witnessed her sister's death she witnessed her brother's death and uh, she herself tried to uh, die or she herself made an attempt to commit suicide and that's why death is uh, her own experience failure and awkwardness see these two are the important uh, uh things in her life that had made her to dive into the depth of depression she couldn't come out of that to such an extent of its depth she had uh, gone down and because of these two failure and awkwardness because she had a greater ambition in her life to be a successful writer but she couldn't become a successful writer and as uh, a result uh, she suffered the great failure and due to that failure she suffered awkwardness in uh, the society and that's why she uh, faced every day of her life as the day of death and that's why throughout this essay she presents she uses these words for many times and then uh, bead and moth see bead and moth these are compared to each other but here bead is lifeless moth is a living one bead is used by the shear to uh, <coughs> uh, deck it down as to say the truth of life but that uh, Uh, decking that that that, that uh, bead that is being decked down by the shear never lives and it uh, never finds any life but it tells the truth of life to others so this is irony on the other hand this moth is given life by the great force and this moth flies and it hangs around and it uh, swings around like the bead decked down by the seer in the string so it also does doesn't have any life or so longer life it has a very short life so immediately after few minutes it faces death and finally it remains no more and then uh bigness of universe and tiny moth see from the beginning to the end of this essay the writer concentrates upon the smallness of the moth and that is how the whole world uh, that is how uh, uh, makes the whole world neglect it negate that moth otherwise means if the same moth had been 
bigger one in size, the whole world would have uh, <coughs> observed it so meticulously, observed it uh, so carefully and uh, the whole world would have shown a lot of pity for its condition. But uh, no mm, living being in the world observes uh, the death of this moth because of its size. And she also feels that she is of uh, no bigger size, she is smaller and tiny and that's why this greatest force uh, uh, <coughs> didn't uh, take care of me and that's why all the way of my life I died and died and died, she feels so. And tiny mouth, she very often says tiny mouth and uh, smallness that is nothingness. Smallness is nothingness to this world. And finally, the great, the, the great, the greatest power and the triumph of power against the small or the tiny creature, the greatest powers triumph over the small creature, the small uh, <coughs> moth. So irony is there. And these are the images throughout this uh, essay uh, importantly uh, used by this uh, <coughs> writer uh, which uh, read something more than what they mean. They read something more than what they mean. It all depends upon the reader. If uh, the reader is able to go through these images and uh, symbolic uh, elements, uh, that reader can understand more than what the words mean in this essay by its literal meaning. If somebody reads only with literal meaning, that would be not sufficient. We have to go through these images and symbolic elements. That makes us to understand something more than what the words mean in this essay. With this much, let us complete this session. Thank you. Thank you one and all.